Hey everyone, Boris Johnson has been re-elected and Jeremy Corbyn has resigned after showing to be as, but as popular on the doorstep as that childhood joke where you set fire to a paper bag with some dog mess in it. I thought this week I'd therefore look at the online labour reaction using the seven stages of grief framework. Part one, shock. You know, when the BBC exit poll first came out, people were shocked, astonished to see something on the BBC saying something positive about the Conservative Party. You know, it's a bit surreal, like watching an episode of Through the Keyhole where Lloyd Grossman breaks into the house before making off with the contents. Part 2, Denial. The denial part is where Corbyn supporters saw the results and assumed that there must be several hundred Labour constituencies left to declare, even several days after all the counts were long done. But even putting Diane Abbott in charge of the recounts wouldn't have helped, because the real denial has been going on for the past four years or so, you know, denying that Corbyn's unpopular outside of London, denying that Brexit's happening, denying the time of day to anyone that disagrees. And that brings us to Anger, Part 3. Anger at the traditional Labour voters who were apparently too brainless to do what they're told. You know, the internet's a pretty dark place. Just look at the anonymous comments underneath news stories about Prince Andrew, many of which are darker and more evil than the crimes being alleged to. But the worst anger, of course, is reserved for the idiot, stupid, racist, bigoted, simple-minded scum that refused to vote for their local candidate who'd had to cancel a wine tasting and travel all the way from Highgate to visit them in, quote, their constituency. Part four, bargaining. This is apparently where they think it'll all be okay because the EU must have the power to cancel Brexit or the court system will intervene or maybe half the Conservatives will still in principle be in favour of a second referendum like that time that Rory Stewart wanted to start a new parliament run from the upstairs room in a local pub. You know, this sort of stuff is probably the most delusional bit so far. You know, More than that nonsense about putting Clive Lewis in charge of the nation's broadband or banning airplanes or thinking that the British Army should spend the spring producing handwritten letters of apology to Gerry Adams. Part 5. Depression. Yeah, a lot of Labour students were depressed but the most depressed people surely are either Theresa May, who just witnessed Boris do what she couldn't do in a million years, as well as maybe Nick Clegg, who knows that Boris is there for five years thanks to the rules that he personally put in place and the referendum that he spent years in opposition agitating for. You know, there will be a bearded man handing out free presents this Christmas, but it won't be Jeremy Corbyn. Although I suppose some Labour activists will take solace with the fact that St Nicholas was from the Middle East, because everyone knows that when a Turkish immigrant breaks into your house in the middle of the night, it's society's fault. You know, it's probably you that's racist. You know, the system forced him to do it. Part 6. Testing. This is apparently where you finally, quote, seek realistic solutions, which in political activism terms means the usual rubbish. You know, Britain has changed for the worse, so they're going to escape and emigrate. Obviously, they're not actually going to emigrate, but it's important to suggest to their friends on Twitter and Facebook how liberal and left-wing they really are. Actually, I will give Tony Blair some credit here. You know, between the mid-Atlantic accent, the five-star hotels in Davos, and a tan that makes him resemble the Kruppernal man, he has at least made a decent go of staying away from the country in the scene of his crimes. The final part, part seven, acceptance. This hasn't happened quite yet, and it won't for quite some time. The party isn't there yet, and until a new leader takes control and does a full-scale review of what happened, it won't. As a shortcut guide, though, here's three important questions to ask any Labour leadership candidates. One, was Bin Laden a goodie or a baddie? Two, do you think that Mossad controls the editorial decisions on the one show? And three, do you know how to eat a bacon sandwich? Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe. Bye.